Right now, the day's biggest news stories from the biggest perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. By the way, uh, JD, do you know what band that is that's playing in the background by chance? Uh, quiz? I do not. That is the band Filter. They that, had is, that, that is Filter. Hit song, hit song, hit song, hit song. Hey, man, nice shot. Hey, at least you didn't say schlong. Yeah, well, the lead singer of that band, no, I didn't, but you did. Uh, the lead singer of Filter is Richard Patrick. <laughs> Actually, his brother is Robert Patrick, the actor, the bad guy from the Terminator movies. Anyway, band's coming to town. He is a huge liberal. In fact, some of his shows has been have been canceled across the country because of his anti-Trump rhetoric that's going on in his shows. Richard's going to join us on the show next week, so that'll be a lot of fun. And if you're an alternative rock fan, the reason why I bring it up is because there's a, there's a good show coming up in Vegas Friday. It is a couple alternative rock bands from the 90s, Live, Bush, and Our Lady Peace. I love all three of these bands. Uh, if memory serves me right, Our Lady Peace, those guys are going to be coming in studio on Friday to sing a couple of songs for us. So that'll be a lot of fun. So, as you know, J.D., we both... Uh, we actually met at the poker table, uh, met you and your wife at the poker table, actually. And uh, I've been playing poker since I was 18 years old. I love the game of poker. I do enjoy to gamble from time to time. And there's all different forms of, of, of gambling that you can do that would be considered, I guess, cheating. Uh, card counting is not cheating. You're actually just using math to try to uh, improve your chances to win. So make no mistake about it. It's not cheating, but a casino can tell you you can't play here anymore. And neither is advantage playing, which is what Phil Helmuth, or which is what Phil Ivey did in, in London. Well, yeah, you're talking about the uh, markings on the cards. Right. Yes. But uh, anyway, I don't want to go through that story. But, yeah, you're right. That's not I, I don't consider that cheating either, and, and they didn't give Phil Ivey the money, which I'm, I'm not in favor of. But there are certain things you can do in a casino that's not cheating, like card counting. And then there's th certain things you can do at the table that are cheating. And this is a story right now in poker that is really, everyone's talking about it. If you haven't heard about this story, here's what we got going on here. There's a gambling hall. It's called Stone's Gambling Hall. And they run this cash game, and they live stream it. What do I mean by live stream? Well, you can see the players' hole cards. And they stream it on the internet so you can see. And this is a pretty big cash game, right? So you can see it live online. Now, the World Series of Poker and ESPN does that here, but here's what they do. They, they broadcast it, but it's on about a 25 to 30-minute delay or so. It looks like that is what we're looking at here on ESPN. Does that make sense, J.D.? I'm getting distracted because you're picking your nose. Are you okay? I'm perfectly fine, Brian. Okay, I'm just, just making I'm sure. I'm just drinking water. <laughs> you're digging for gold over there. That's okay. I do it in my car all the time. I won't <laughs> do it in my new car, though. But uh, anyway, uh, getting back to what we were saying. So ESPN, they broadcast it live, J.D., but it's like a 25, 30-minute delay. Now, why do they do that? Why do they put it on a delay? Why does ESPN put it on a delay? You tell me. Well, it's pretty easy because they don't want people to cheat. If you're broadcasting it live on ESPN... People are going to text each other and cheat. Now, I know they don't allow phones being used at the table, but still, it just gives a, an opportunity for somebody to cheat. Well, that's what a gentleman did here in this casino. He's playing a live cash game. Keep in mind, there is no delay. Okay? No delay at all on this live broadcast. So what is this guy doing? You can see the video. It's like on YouTube. So he's looking at his whole cards. And I don't know if he's getting text messages from people saying what the whole cards are of his opponents or he's watching live stream himself. I would imagine he's not dumb enough to be doing that on his phone. But I think he was probably getting text messages or something. So here's what this guy would do. Somebody, one of his friends, is obviously watching the live stream. And when he's in a hand with somebody, he's taking as much time as possible to get information. He keeps looking down in his lap to his phone. And as he's doing that, somebody was telling him, hey, your his opponent's whole cards. I think he was playing snood or solitaire. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was going on. Anyway, he won just under $100,000, but the proof is absolutely in the pinning, pudding. When you look at the actual uh, hands that were played, the way he played them, he knew exactly what those others were holding. This wasn't like one or two hands. This went on for a while because, again, 
this was live streamed. So my, my question to this is, first of all, by the way, the, the casino, they're not live streaming anymore. It's probably a decent idea. And this is, this is Stone's Gambling Hall in California. So this guy, his name is Postal. He has not responded to requests for comment. He actually did defend himself on Twitter on a poker podcast saying, it is absolutely impossible for me to be doing what they're claiming. It is 1,000% impossible. No, it's not. He lied. And by the way, he was on Mike the Mouth Mattisau's podcast, and Mike the Mouth Mattisau was defending him, which is unbelievable. We asked Mike to come on the show, and he claimed he couldn't come on because of the Jewish holiday. He, Yet I'm pretty confident that Mike Mattisau gambles on the Jewish holiday. So that made absolutely <laughs> that made his, absolutely his, no I, sense I, to me at all. His excuse <laughs> his excuse was Yom Kippur, and you have to respect that. I think it is completely disgusting that you defend this guy. Completely and utterly disgusting. I think that what he, I mean, again, I didn't hear his podcast, but I'm guessing that he's saying that this guy just took advantage of what of what he was, you know, given. And it sounds like possibly a foreman was involved. A foreman was was given him the advice. He was looking down. He was overly distracted almost every single hand, mm -hmm. and he played ninety nine point nine percent of his hands completely perfectly. Right. That means the right folds, the right raises, the right calls. That is just literally impossible. Here's what also proves he was cheating, okay? Uh, poker commentator Joey Ingram said that he estimates Postal won about a quarter of a million dollars. He won more than I thought, by the way, over 250 hours of play in a relatively low-stakes game. Poker pro Matt Berkey, who has been on this show before, said in this article that that is a win rate of about 10 times what the greatest player in the world could be expected to win in these same games. Yeah, Postal I mean, that, that Stu Unger on yep. more crack than even he did. Mm -hmm. Postal disputes the amount he's won, saying it's less than half of the 250000 Look, this guy Postal's a scumbag. Well, and then not only this, then he doubles down and says, I will play anyone in the world heads up, and he calls out Doug Polk, who Doug Polk is a, is a pretty very easy. He's one of the best heads up players Look, in modern. I mean, in, in the in modern history. Make no mistake about it. Especially this, online. This is cheating. But when you're when you're broadcasting a game, and it should be the responsibility of the casino to say no cell phones are allowed, no electronic devices are allowed, and if we detect that, you are banned from the casino. That's all they had to do, and they didn't do it. Now they did come out with a statement. This casino, this is Stones Gambling Hall. They said we temporarily halted all broadcast from from Stones. We have also, as a result, halted the use of the RFID playing cards. I don't think the playing cards have anything to do with this. I think it's pretty simple here. This was the live broadcast. Make no mistake about it. This is exactly what it was. And for this guy, you know, po listen, poker is a scummy game. Let's call it for what it is. Okay, you are sitting there lying about a story on a poker hand there's there's obviously a tremendous amount of bluffing and strategy involved but make no mistake about it you are there to take the other person's money okay this is poker is not a gentleman's game okay we're not out there playing golf this is not a gentleman's game we see a lot of these professional poker players i would say a large amount of them have gambling problems a large amount a, a lot are really really bad sports betters I just, mean, like, just degenerate. historically awful Listen, sports betters. Just, de just degenerate gamblers. And I'm not talking about no-name poker players. I'm talking about some of the best poker players in the world. I'm talking like Tom DeWan. Oh, ask Phil Ivey how much money he's lost at the craps tables over the years, okay? There, there are rumors that Phil Ivey is actually living, or he was living in China. He sold his home here in for, Vegas. For an extended period of time just to pay off his gambling debts. He was basically owned by a major bookie in Macau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty bad. This is a pretty difficult uh, situation for the poker world and the poker community. But the fact that there are some people like Mike the Mouth Manasau that are defending this guy is just utterly disgrace. It's a disgrace. This guy is a cheater, and he's lying through his teeth. And the poker community, and I, I respect guys like Daniel Negreanu. We'll we'll get him on the show to talk a little bit about this. But I respect guys like that, and they should. If they're the face of the game and, and they're professional players and, and it matters what they say, you need to come out against this guy. And the fact that Mike Mattisau is defending him because he was on his podcast is, is, is just absolutely ridiculous. He declined to come on our show today, but I would tell him that. I think it's disgraceful. It is clear as day what this guy is doing. Make no mistake about it. Poker is a scummy game. So let me ask you guys this question. If you know of a guy that is cheating, and, and, and this isn't angle shooting, this is flat out cheating, you're getting information on a live broadcast while you're at the poker table. That is cheating. Do you think this guy should be prosecuted if the evidence is there, J.D.? Do you think that this guy 
should be prosecuted? Do you think it's a crime? And I'll open up the phone lines. Do you think it is a crime if somebody is looking at a live broadcast at the poker table they're at so they can see the whole cards of their opponents? This is a lot of money involved, folks. We're talking about upwards of around a quarter million dollars. What do you think about this? 257-5396. Let me give out the number. 257-5396. Again, 702-257-5396. I think we have to make sure that someone that wasn't connected, because the, the venue should have taken care of this a long time ago. This should not this should not be a problem. I agree they with that. They should do the exam. The World Series of Poker has done it this way for well, on ESPN for, for almost 15, 20 years, and they've done it well. So why would they not do the exact same thing? Why would, why would, why would there not be a delay? So I would look in and see if the venue is in, in, in any way attached Mm. and is in any way getting compensated for this. Let's say, for example, the floor man is the one is the culprit here and say he's getting 30%. If that's the case, then I believe that both should be taken down for theft. Absolutely. So s- a, quarter, a, a quarter million dollars? Mm-hmm. Let's say this guy has a, a, a standard win rate of, of, of a couple deviations over, over, your, over your normal win rate, mm-hmm. and he goes completely outside of the norm for 250 hours. I mean, bad beats alone are, are going to cut you almost a, a third of that. Yep. So take that into consideration. Even if he's a winning player and he might be in a situation to win, the fact that he is literally stealing from these people, to me, that's theft. It absolutely is. I think that the casino could be responsible for something like this. But uh, in my opinion, it's absolute theft. You know, what's the difference between doing something like this or having some sort of gadget that is checking the whole cards at a blackjack table. To me, it's the exact same thing. You would probably go to jail. The gaming commission would be all well, over what, you. What's the difference between this and fixing a game, mm-hmm. paying a bunch of young college kids mm-hmm. X amount of dollars to shave points and making several bets across 15 books across the United States at three to 5000 a game? Yeah. It, it, I, I don't see a, a difference. You're, you're, you, are, you are controlling the outcome, or at least you are meddling with the outcome. You absolutely are. And I again, I am just amazed that there are poker players out there that are defending this guy. Not many, by the way, but there are a few that are defending this guy. Shame on them. How bad is this for your sport or game or whatever you want to call it? How bad is this for poker? It just makes it just makes poker look terrible. All right, I'll tell you what I want to do here. I want to give some prizes away. As you know, I always enjoy taking care of our listeners, and today is no exception on that. So here's what I'm going to do for you guys out there. It's called the Silver State Brewfest. And I have a pair of tickets to give away. This certificate is good for a complimentary admission for two to the Silver State Brewfest. This is located poolside at the Tuscany Suites and Casino on Saturday, October 12th. This is complimentary admission. includes all-you-can-drink craft beer. Pretty cool stuff. We will take the fourth caller right now. We'll do this quickly here. 257-5396 is the number to call. Fourth caller right now at 257-5396 is going to win a pair of tickets to the Silver State Brewfest. Brewfest, and that includes all you can drink craft beer. The really cool prize. Again, fourth caller at 257 5396, and you just scored yourself a pair of tickets to the Silver State Brewfest. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You are listening to the Vegas Take right here on the all new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K Dawn. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp Shapiro, so glad you could join us. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we'll be talking to uh, Brian Salmon, who is the Lead sports anchor for Channel 3 here. Does a fantastic job. We have a huge hockey game coming up tonight between the Vegas Golden Knights and a really, really good team in the East, which is the Boston Bruins. So we'll be getting to that in a little bit. Zion Williamson, boy, did he do a fantastic job yesterday. Uh, Really unbelievable start for him, even in NBA preseason. He's looking like an NBA All-Star. It's unbelievable. We'll get to that. we got the Major League Baseball playoffs. we got two game fives to discuss tomorrow, so we will get to that as well. And... Much, much more, and we'll talk a little UNLV in there as well. And that sound means we're talking about the GCI guys at the Realty One Group. And listen to this. If you or anyone you know is thinking of buying a home or moving from Cali, the GCI guys' services are completely free. You pay them nothing, and our listeners get a grand in your hand at closing. So if you or anyone you know wants to buy a home and calls Realtor Lee Goldberg, it's free for his services and get a grand back at closing. That's right. Also, they'll give you a moving truck for a day and six free months of home security. Pretty cool. No hidden fees or games. It's the GCI guys, a free educational resource. Call them, 702-902-3029, and get a grand back. Why wouldn't you call the GCI guys? Again, 702-902-3029. So here's an interesting one for you, J.D. So I was never the biggest George W. Bush fan. I think he makes, he, he makes, I think Donald Trump makes him look like a genius. 
But uh, anyway, that's another story for another show. But I wasn't a big W guy. So Ellen DeGeneres sat next to uh, W at a football game recently. And she ha- and as you know, Ellen is a huge Democrat. And she's not a supporter of Donald Trump. I don't think she's ever supported a Republican president. She's one of those Hollywood people that's a liberal. And, and, and that's not a shock. That shouldn't be a shock to anybody. I've never had a problem with Ellen DeGeneres. I don't watch her show because I think her show's boring. I don't like her show. I don't think she's funny. I never did. I just don't watch her show, but I don't have a problem with her. Anyway, she has taken a ton of criticism on social media because she sat next to George W. Bush. Listen, everybody knows how much I despise Donald Trump, but if I had a chance to sit next to him during a game, I would absolutely sit next to him, and here's why. First of all, just because you have disagreements with somebody or you think somebody is a horrible human being, it doesn't mean you can't have a conversation with them and maybe you can reach some common ground. Maybe it's an opportunity to sit with someone and have a conversation with them. Maybe get to know them a little bit better. It doesn't mean it's going to change your mind or change your opinions about him or her, but it is an opportunity. And it is also the same reason why I think that these professional uh, teams like NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, it's why I think they should take the invitation to go to the White House for this reason and this reason alone. If you don't like Donald Trump and you don't like his policies, you don't like him as a person, it doesn't even mean you have to shake his hand. It's an experience to go to the White House. And it is maybe an opportunity to take five minutes and speak with the president. It is maybe an opportunity to have a conversation with him and maybe take one of those issues that you have with him and discuss it with him and maybe have a conversation. Maybe he won't have that conversation with you, but maybe he will. I am on Ellen DeGeneres' side on this one. I don't think she did anything wrong just because you... Now, listen. O.J. Simpson, you know, people like that, that's a completely different category, right? We're talking about a president. We're talking about politics. We're not talking about O.J. Simpson, who, in my opinion, is a double murderer. We're not talking about, you know, somebody like that. We're not talking about Scott Peterson, who killed his wife and unborn child. We're talking about politics. We're talking about disagreements. And you could not like somebody personally, but I think... It's an opportunity. Do you agree with that, J.D.? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, why would I not agree with that, Brian? I don't know. I'm asking you. Okay, yeah, of course I agree. Ellen DeGeneres has taken a lot of flack, so you're defending Ellen. Yeah, wow. For sitting next to, to George Bush? Mm-hmm. Oh, w. W. Bush. Okay, yeah, 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 George W. Bush? Yeah. Why would, I, why would that bother me at all? Well, there's a lot of people on social media that and are giving I, her a lot I, of flack. And I think that's completely ridiculous. Just you know, And it goes into the, the thought process that just because you are – a a liberal or a conservative that you have to hang out with specific people you have to think specific things everything i take everything on a situational basis on a case-by-case basis and the same thing applies here yeah just because because i I don't agree with someone politically doesn't mean i can't sit next to them at a game i would i mean are you kidding me i would absolutely take an opportunity to sit next to a sit next to either a former president or a current president i absolutely would people are forgetting this guy is is a bush which is one of the most prominent families in american history and was the, the former president of the United States of America. But even, like, I hate the Kardashians. I really do. Okay. But if I had an opportunity to sit next to Kim Kardashian, I absolutely would. And I would talk to her and I would say, you know, I, I wouldn't be rude to her, but I would have a conversation you, with her. Would you sit next to O.J. Simpson and watch a football game with him at Grape Street? That is a really difficult question. That's a good question, but it's honest, a difficult Honest question. He, he, he leans over to you because he's got charisma and he wants to talk to you about the bets you've got. And he, and he wants your thoughts on fantasy football. Only, only Would you talk to him about that? Only if I was able to talk to him about some of the reasons why I don't like him. So I would answer his questions, and I wouldn't, uh, you know, but I would say, you know, are you, are, you tr- are you really looking for the real killer, OJ? Are you still looking for the real killer? Because I think he's a double murderer. And, and I, would, I would only do it for a couple different reasons. I would want to ask him those questions. I would ask him if he'd come on our show. I would do it for those purposes. Right, of course. But I would, I would address why I don't like him. I think he's just, you know, he's a, he's a murderer. He's a scumbag. He's a murderer. Um, so if he asked me those questions, I would sit next to him and I probably would say, OJ, I'll gladly answer you those questions, but I have a question for you. Are you looking for the real killer? And I would see if he would want to engage me in that conversation. He probably wouldn't. But if he was willing to engage me in that conversation, then I would have that now, conversation. Th- th- there's him. a couple of people that I probably wouldn't want to sit down next to. Who's that? George Soros. <laughs> would not want to sit down next to him. But Ellen DeGeneres, just because just because she disagrees with me on a couple of issues, she's not a bad person. She hasn't been convicted or or accused of any heinous crimes. I have absolutely no issue with Ellen DeGeneres. Do you know I, I'm not 
I'm not homosexual, she is, but does that change anything? No. Yeah. Why 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 does that have why is she getting flack for wanting to have the company of a former president of the United States? Mm-hmm. To me that is obscene. Yeah, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the flack that she's taking. But I tried to answer your question about OJ as good as I could. I mean, that's it's a, that's a tough spot. See, I absolutely would. I, I would give him advice on that. Yeah, I, I would. I would want to ask him about some of the others. I would. I would want to talk football with him. I wouldn't want to talk football with him. I want to talk to him about uh, you know what transpired 25 years ago and why I feel the way I feel about him. I, I would talk to him about that. And if he didn't want to engage me uh, engage me in that conversation, I'd probably tell him to go f himself, and I would walk away. That's probably what I would do. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, Brian Salmon, sports anchor from Channel 3, will talk to us about a big Vegas Golden Knights game today against the Bruins. Take a quick break. Be back right after this.